Welcome back to quiltingcowboy.com. <laughs> Ready for some more fun? Oh, and by the way, it's not lost on me entirely that my outfit is a little reminiscent of Mario Jr., that little video game. <laughs> I put this on today, and I was like, red hat mustache. I was like, that reminds me of something. I was like, oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that Mario Jr. game or whatever it is. Anyways, wow, see how easily I can just get sidetracked. Um, what am I doing? Oh yeah, so uh, once you have the sandwich together, right, in order to make the, uh, um, you know, the top, the batting and the back, you know, as one, then you want to quilt it on a mid-arm. I'm gonna walk you through the steps because <laughs> if you're anything like me, you just went to the uh, you know, sewing machine store and you did a quick, quick trial on the mid-arm and then you purchased one <laughs> on a layaway plan or with credit and then you got it home and you're like, I actually really don't know how to use this thing. <laughs> and so I just wanted to show you what I've learned over the few years that I've owned this machine and what to do <clears throat> from the tutorial that I showed you in terms of putting the sandwich together what do you do from that point forward in order to actually quilt it, okay? So that's what this tutorial is gonna be covering as far as beginning quilting for people who have a mid-arm machine, all right? So that's what we're gonna be covering today, and I'm gonna be doing this uh, uh, Scotsman Pride quilt. The pattern is available for sale on my website if you like it, um, but I'm really excited to get this one quilted, and I wanted to take you through the steps in order to, oh, wow, look at that. I just put my hand on that and the blade was open. Ooh, okay, let's get started. All right, so I have my ruler and I have, um, you know, my roll and cutter. Anyhow, uh, what you wanna do first is trim up the excess down to about an inch. See how I have so much right here? And what I really wanna do is I wanna have it look more like this edge, which I've already done, right? So I have a little bit of overlap, but not a ton, right? So what I'm gonna go through and do, which is very, actually backwards from this angle, let me come over here, is just trim this up, right? So just to about an inch, right? One inch, put that down, and so that, right, it's all gonna be just like this, just to clean it up a little bit. All that excess going through your machine and everything, you don't need it. Um, leave yourself a little wiggle room because um, sometimes the quilting will actually move some of the layers and you do want to be able to account for that. Um, so like I said, I usually leave one inch, but just trim it up all the way around uh, and then we'll be ready to start uh, really putting it together in terms of some uh, stitches that will kind of generally hold it in place. All right, next we are going to go through thread selection, which I cannot um, tell you how important this step is. You got to get this right um, and I'll tell you a really good tip. You're gonna want to, wherever possible, uh, have the main body of the project done in a similar thread color as the back, okay? Because it will minimize, like let's say that you have in the bobbin white thread and then in the top thread you have dark navy. So what's gonna happen is you're going to get little spots of white where you don't want it, um, or little spots of dark blue um, on the underside where you don't want it. So what happens is, and it's just a tension thing, and 100% perfect tension is pretty damn impossible to achieve all the time, especially when you're sewing fast or moving it in various directions because it's gonna pull, right, and have different tension on the thread at various points of your work. So, I look at this and I think, okay, what is the halfway point between this kind of oatmeal tan colored and this orange, right? So then I'll go to my threads. Ah, hold on, one moment. <laughs> Oh God, I did legs at the gym today. Um, okay, so then I found these, right? That might be good contenders for kind of a orangish tan, right? What does that look like? So then I'm going to actually unwind them and put them down on the material so that I can see what it would look like in both the um, tan and the orange areas. So let's do a close-up of that. 
All right, you can see I have these various threads lined up uh, here, right? And so what I'm looking for is the least, uh, the one that draws the least amount of attention to itself, right? And so I look at it and how it lays on both colors to see what is uh, probably going to work the best. So I feel like, and I always disregard something that feels too bright right? Because I would rather have a slightly darker thread than a brighter thread that calls attention to itself. And so I feel like this orange one is probably too bright. I also feel like this white one is probably also too bright. So I have these mid-tone ones. And so I look at them and think, okay, what is going to look best on both colors that I am going to like? And I usually tend to skew towards either a tan or a gray. Um, in multicolor situations, but for this one, hmm, I really could go either way. I don't, I don't hate this one. Um, this one I feel like is drawing a lot of attention to itself, which is not what I want, and I think this one is probably too green. So that gets me down to these two, and whether I want a more orange or a more tan, um, I can kind of decide on that. I'm probably gonna go with this tan one, right? But you can see how I do that just in terms of deciding. Now, the next step is going to be, do I want this same color to be on in the bobbin? So let's take a look at that. So this is the thread that I've decided to use on the top, and I just wanna take a look at, at it on the bottom, on the back fabric, right? So I wanna see how that looks and feels. It's a little dark um, for what I would normally use, so I might look at um, taking a shade of this just slightly lighter, um, but again, making it so close that it's not really gonna make a visible difference. Uh, but I do feel like this thread on the back uh, would be a bit dark. No, this is a weird angle, but <laughs> it's how I'm making it work for now. Um, so these are the two threads that I chose, right? And so the darker one is gonna be on the top and the other one, the lighter one is gonna be on in the bobbin. And you can see that I did that, look how close they are in color. Right, so that if it does slightly pick up and the tension changes at all, um, that I'm not gonna have white dots or I'm not gonna have weirdness, right, from that tension just being off, even for a second, right? So that's the first thing. The second you, thing you wanna do is to make sure that uh, you are using a good thread that is not going to pull apart. If you're using a mid-arm, it does put quite a bit of tension on it. Um, and so you're going to want to use <clears throat> A, probably a polyester. Cotton thread does tend to just, like the, the strands just pull apart and it's super frustrating. Um, so I always suggest for the mid arm to use not cotton, but a, a nylon, right? And so I always just get the uh, all purpose. Uh, it works great and um, anyhow, so those are my tips, uh, not nylon, polyester. I knew I was saying it wrong. <laughs> Anyhow, um, so I've determined what threads I'm going to use, and so now I'm gonna put it in the machine and then check my tension. Very important. Right. I find threading this thing a little bit complicated, so I always just leave the thread in there, right, from the old one that is cut, oh, it's actually still attached, to a spool that is down on the floor. Um, all right, so then I'll just cut that off and I'll actually attach these are you even seeing what I'm doing? Um, right, so then I'll just knot those. And then, now that these are kind of one, I'll just pull the old thread through, and you'll watch the knot that's right here coming down through it. <coughs> now, I'll take the tension off it, which is right here, right, click, and kind of run that through down and around there. And once it's past that, this little guy here, I don't know what it's called, um, where it holds the tension, right? Then I'll put the tension back in and run it down through and cut it off. And now it is threaded without me having to figure out all the ins and outs of this. I mean, I've done it several times. It's just a lot easier to keep it threaded. All right, then rather than start from scratch. So then finish threading it and I'm going to grab you know those parts, uh, the sides uh, that I cut off just uh, just now from the quilt? I will keep those. They serve a very important purpose 
and checking my tension for the real thread that I will be using and the real fabrics that are going to, oh, come on, joys, huh? Work with me um, with the real fabrics that are in the quilt. Okay, so these guys that I just cut off, right? This is the real fabric. And so <laughs> I will just drop this down in there and pick up the bobbin thread, pull that out. And this is the best way I've found to check the tension on it. And I cannot, I, oh my gosh, the first quilt I did on this, I was devastated. The tension was off and I didn't realize it. And I quilted the whole thing with the tension off and the back of it looks like a murder scene. I was <laughs> very upset. Anyhow, um, work with me here. Why is this giving me grief? Is that thread super long or what? All right, there's one. Okay, here's the other. Well, that was a lot going on there. All right, so we got that up and ready. Why is this so long? Okay, no way. Um, and so we're ready to start sewing. All right, drop that down and just kind of set that and then check the tension. Just, I always do two things. I do a circular and I do a zigzag, right? That way, that's pretty much all the motion that you'll do, right? Arcing or whatever. But in terms of more, uh, not really violent, but you know, more aggressive type of quilting, you do circles or points, right? And so those are the things you really wanna check. So I'll check that. Uh, yeah, I need a little, a little more tension on it. Okay. Try that again. A little more. Okay, getting there. Better. Go up one more point. 15. Okay, and then um, just do some circles. See how that did. Not bad, not bad. God, I really could have a little more tension on this. See, this is why you wanna check, right? Because, ooh, this is the other thing. The, if you have two different types of threads, like one in the bobbin and one up top, but, uh, <laughs> it is gonna be twice as hard to get your um, tension right. Whereas if you have the same type of thread, right, on the top and the bottom, same gauge, same type, you know, the polyester versus um, cotton, right, it's gonna be a lot easier. So try and get them as similar as possible in the type of thread that they are, that will make it easier. All right, let's try this again. Okay. Yeah, not bad, not bad. It's not amazing. Uh, we're gonna take it up just one more notch. All right. Okay, and check the up and down. It's not bad. I'm gonna try on one more piece. Huh. Anyways, just do that with the leftover scraps that you cut off and get your tension right. And then we're ready to actually look at what we wanna quilt into it, all right? All right, so I'm ready to go. I'm showing you this from the other side, right? My machine is here. And I put my ironing board next to the mid-arm table so that I have kind of a return. You know how a desk has a return? Well, that's what I use my ironing board for. And I wish the manufacturers of these types of products would make such a thing. It would be especially helpful if one was on both sides, but you know, that's how it goes. Um, so I use my ironing board uh, to essentially hold the weight 
of the quilt when it's spilling off the table because the table is quite small. Right, so I get this into here and I kind of determine like if I'm gonna do anything in the ditch, I'll do it on my uh, tabletop, right? Just my regular sewing machine, not on this machine, uh, in order to kind of stitch in the ditch along certain lines to kind of almost just, you know, kind of hold it all in place so that I don't have to rely just strictly on the temporary basting glue that I have this sandwich being held together with, right? But since I'm not doing anything in the ditch in this project, I'm just gonna go ahead and um, start from the top and kind of start sewing things into place, moving as much as I can so that it's being still held up and not on the floor, right, by my return and I'll just start in this one corner and move this direction, right? All right, when you first get one of these machines, you're like, oh, I could just pick it up and do whatever and I'm just gonna be awesome. Don't do that. <laughs> the best way to use these machines is with grids and rulers, okay? Especially in the beginning. You're not quite sure how to do it, right? So they have these plastic, very thick, plastic grids where the needle will go like this and you just have to push it along. Even that takes practice. So don't just assume that that's going to be easy for you in the beginning. Start slow. I love this one for scallops, right? Small and big on that one ruler. Um, I love a tool like this, which has a various different ways to do things. Um, you need, of course, a straight just ruler right <laughs> look like it's got chips in it from where <laughs> the needle came down on it oops <laughs> <laughs> and then um i have this set of arches right that are different sizes and shapes that i use quite a bit so i'm gonna look at this and uh i kind of have an idea of what i want to do in each um thing but because the uh you know thistle is applicated in the middle. I gotta be mindful of that as well when I'm determining the design that I wanna quilt into this. All right, so let's look at how we wanna do this. Okay, so I'm probably gonna go with something along this, depending on how deep I wanna get in there, but this is probably, that's probably good. Okay, and so I'm gonna drop the needle in here right in the corner, pick up my bottom bobbin thread, pull those to the side, drop the needle, right? Do a couple stitches just to tie that in, trim up those, and then, I almost need a smaller one. I don't have a smaller one though. That one's too small. Hmm. Yep. This is time to make it work. All right, that one needs to be a little bit more. Okay, I can make that work. All right, so what I'm going to do then is hold this in place, right? You can see I have my little arch, all right? And I know that the needle has to have clearance over here in this corner, right? So I need to bring the arch down so that I know that it, but it'll land perfectly in this corner. All right, and then what I do is I hold it all together and just go. Right, can you see that? Make sure, I'm not sure if the light is too bright or not, but you can probably see this arc right here. These lights sometimes, there we go. Sometimes throw it off. And then from there, I'm just gonna turn it I actually, you know, might just keep going. Actually, that's not a bad idea. <laughs> that's the way so much of my quilting goes. Like, I just figure it out as I go. Ah, okay. <laughs> All right, then next one. Perfect. See how that went? And then I'll just keep going down the row. Easy enough. 
And so I'm gonna do it this way, and then I'm gonna do it this way, coming back down the other, so I'm gonna do it all four directions with just this simple arc, and that's gonna essentially um, give me, as you can see, four different corners, right? Having the same arc in them. Ah, messed that one up. All right, I messed it up a little bit, but it's not too bad. I can, I can live with that. There are plenty that I can't with though, and I'll pick it out. Um, all right. Okay. So then that's it. You can see how this will be effective going all the way across and then all the way back. Okay, so I'm just gonna do that. All right, you see I have come down here and I've just been hopping from one corner to the next, right? So now I'm gonna actually head back up this way and then hop down this way, but every time, <clears throat> I come to this point here, right? I'm also then gonna turn it so, let me see if I can kind of show you. So I'm gonna go like this and I'm gonna come along here to this point, right? And then I'm going to go up here and then I'm gonna come back down here and then I'm gonna go over here like that, right? And so that's how I'm going to go back the other way <clears throat> is what you do is you do one hop, you do a Christmas, tree light bulb, <laughs> that's what I call it. I don't know if that's what it's called or not. <laughs> right, so one and then up and then down and across and up and down, right? So that's what I'm gonna do um, on my way back. Now I'm actually gonna turn this because it's going to be easier. <clears throat> it's always easier when the quilt itself is on the table, right? And not hanging off. That's why I wish they'd make these tables with two returns, one on either side, so that you don't have the quilt either falling onto the floor and skewing your work or um, in your lap. And now I'm going to go up. And then back down. All right? And then across again. just that easy. See? And then I'm going to go up again. So it's just keeping the tension on the right of places. And additionally, um, a lot of this is, hold on one second not keeping it too tense. When you're doing this, you have to really focus on the right amount of energy in order to do it. If you're too tense, it won't work, right? If you're too relaxed, it also won't work. So there's finding that right balance of being able to move it, right? Hold the tension against the guard of the needle and still be able to have kind of a free motion feel to it, but that's very engaged, all right? All right, so you can see how I've come up down along here and have completed this by hopping over, right? And then going up and then coming down and then hopping over, going up and coming down. But I'm at the end of the row now. And so I'm here. And so I'm just gonna just start doing here, 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 all the way across without going up and down right now because I'll do that on the second pass just like I did with these, all right? Now, watch the weight because there's a lot hanging off the table here. And I can start going back the other way. Another thing to think about, actually let me turn this light off, you can see it easier. Uh, um, is when you're coming along here, you may want to stop halfway through your line along your um, gauge. 
because you may want to reevaluate. Like sometimes I'll get to the middle like this, right? And then I'll double check to see if this end is actually still lining up or did this gauge, uh, did this ruler move in that first part of the transaction in order to bring it back home and close it um, successfully. So I'll double check that that's in the right place and then finish it, all right? So don't be afraid to do that. Go Just go halfway, half the circle, check and make sure that your back end of the circle is still gonna line up. All right, I know my uh, Mario Brothers look has gone off the chain um, as I put on my <laughs> gloves. <laughs> my magic gloves, right? So if you have a mid-arm, um, you know, or even just doing quilting on your regular desktop, you're probably gonna wanna invest in one of these. It just really helps you grip everything a lot better. <laughs> and uh, yeah, it's just, Super warm in the studio here, and now I have to put gloves on, so let's see how this goes. But um, the point of all this <laughs> is um, I've kind of done the circles, right? Like we had started doing. Oh, let me turn the light off, actually. That um, really helps you see it a lot better, um, I think, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> but you can see I did all of the circles that we had kind of reviewed um, earlier. And so now I'm going into this part here on the purple, and I wanted to show you kind of a close-up of how I do that without marking it. And so what I do is I have this gridded ruler, right? And so I will, like I just sewed across uh, here and then went up, and then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna line up one of these lines on the grid here with one of the lines of the square, right? And so I'll line that up and then I'll take that so that I know that it's as square as possible. I'll hold everything, picking this up, knowing that it's going to be a problem if I don't have the fabric loose uh, enough. And then I'm gonna take it sideways like that and then just keep repeating that. So I'm gonna go up a bit, right? And then, uh, let's see, what distance do I want here? A little bit more. And so then it's here, it's squared up here, it's going straight across, right? And then back up. Okay, so that's how I do it without having to actually physically mark it because um, as I've talked about before, actually marking the quilt um, sometimes can cause a problem. I have yet to find the perfect solution. Uh, whereas with this, I can just line it up, right? See where I'm going and I can actually just keep building on the last set of stitches that I did to keep um, moving forward as opposed to marking it out and then doing that, I just, I, I follow the grid and I go to the next line on it and I just keep doing that. So that's what I'm working on now. Um, I'm just gonna go um, essentially across, right? And then up a little bit and then across and then up a little bit and across. So that's what I'm doing now um, with this guy, okay? All right, so I kind of finished the lines going back and forth there. I'm not sure if you can see them or not. Um, turn the light off here just for a second and see if uh, that helps you see it or not. I'm not sure. Anyhow, um, I'll show you a close-up after. But uh, now I'm gonna do the perimeter. Now for this thing, you're going to want to go pretty slow. Um, so I, I set it on a slower, slower setting and then just go very slowly as I move all of this and just watch the perimeter. See, I'm not going fast at all, right? Just to make sure that that whole edge, it actually makes it really pretty too. I love the, the, the color of the thread really starts to pop along the perimeter and starts to outline it. Um, so, now, 
When I get to the end, to this corner here, I'm gonna take wanna take one stitch beyond it, just very, uh, very, very small. One stitch beyond it and one stitch to the side, just so that where the um, corner of the applique is uh, really gets tacked down on that corner, right? So it's just uh, on both sides uh, getting held in place both directions, okay? And then I'm gonna keep going around. And then back down. Now I've done a lot of this already because of the way that I was going back and forth, right? Um, so this just evens it up, uh, whereas Right, you go across and then up and then across and then up and then across and then up. This makes sure that the entire perimeter is done. And you always gotta be mindful of keeping as much fabric loose right on here so that it doesn't pull and skew your um, sewing. Okay. All right, so that's one of them done. And I'll show you a close up of that so you can see what I did there. Hold on. All right, so you can see I'm just finishing there on the end, but you can see how the perimeter is completely done. And then I just went back and forth and back and forth on that with my ruler, right? Until the whole thing was done, All right? That's pretty much it. So I'm gonna do the rest of those flower petals in that. Um, and I tend to like pretty simple stitching uh, and quilting, so I'm just gonna continue with that. One other way that I gauge this is see this guard around the needle? I'll actually use that as a measuring device. So I've finished this row, right? And then I'm gonna take it up to where that gauge, that circle is now out of that line. And so I know it's uh, in the right place to do the next pass across. And so I'll just square up this ruler with the uh, squares in the quilt and take that across, right? And then move it up until the circle, the guard is beyond the stitches. And then I know it's ready and I'll line this up, take it across back the other way and then back up. And again, I'm just watching, okay, circle is just beyond the stitches. It's ready to go back the other way, right? And so it gives me a fairly uniform way of, of telling. Um, and I, I, you know, I'm not super crazy about making sure that it's exactly perfect and uniform and because I like a little bit of, I don't know, human error, maybe is not quite the right word, but you know, human touch to it, that it doesn't look like it was generated by a computer, but actually hand done. Um, and so I'll just keep doing that. Again, watching this, once it gets beyond the stitches, it's ready to take across. It's just that easy. You can see that I finished doing this, but also that my tension got off. See the little white dots right here? Um, that means that my thread was too tight and the tension is too tight because it's picking up the back thread and pulling it to the front, right? Um, and the reverse would be true if the top thread was showing on the back side, that would mean that uh, your back thread, your bobbin thread is too tight or your top thread is too loose. So that's just one way to go about identifying that, but this is done. I think it's looking pretty good. And so I'm gonna move on to this section here um, and show you kind of another way to use the same ruler. All right, so I look at this and I'm essentially just gonna cross hatch it, right? I love just basic quilting. It's, you know, traditional, it, uh, you know, is easy and it's, I think it always looks great. So my ruler has a 45 degree line on it, which I'm lining up with this line of the actual quilt, right? And so I line that up on the 45, I mark it, all right, can you see that? And let me just finish this line. And then from there, now that I've established the 45, I'm gonna sew along there first, and then same as I did up here, right? Just keep, you know, sectioning it out uh, based off of the grid on the ruler. And I'm going to make this um, a little bit bigger grid than I did this one. 
and um, oh, then as far as uh, the white dots showing through on this purple, uh, one thing I might do, depends on uh, how I kind of feel about it once it's washed and everything, because sometimes like the dye from the surrounding fabric kind of like bleeds into that fabric or that thread and it's not as noticeable, but that's, you can't always count on that. So if that doesn't work, then um, don't tell anyone because I'm, you know, the purists are gonna freak out. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not here to make it perfect. I'm just here to make it look good and do what you know makes me happy and has worked for me. So, anyhow, um, I will take a uh, similar colored uh, sharpie or um, yeah, they actually have really great fabric ink pens um, that is the same color as this, and just touch those white spots just the tiniest little bit um, so that it kind of you know, disappears um, and it becomes the same color purple as the surrounding fabric. My little tip, if it works for you, great. If you hate that idea, that's fine too. <laughs> All right, so I'm gonna get started on this. Um, let me just drop this down. Okay, and, oh, I have the wrong color thread in here. One moment. Now, because I have changed thread and I was experiencing tension uh, issues already on that last one, I just really want to double check where I am with this one. So I am going to go ahead and take the quilt out for a second and double check the tension on um, just a pre-made sandwich from a leftover uh, piece that I cut off the side of a quilt. If I can get this, you know, that's the downside of having shaky hands. It's hard to thread. Oh, damn it. Hold on. Okay, there we go. Okay, that's done. And pull this up through. Okay, so check the tension. All right, points. Look, it's mostly reading green, right? So I'm happy with that on the back side. It is reading, so the tension is actually pretty good. Uh, let me do a couple circles on this. Looks good. So I'm happy with that. Um, if you are having problem with getting your tension just right, another thing you can adjust if you're not just getting it through the tension dial um, is the speed in which you're sewing will also affect the tension. So you might want to play with that a little bit if you're really struggling. Okay, so now I'm going back to the original quilt. First line is going to be the most difficult because once that's set, then you can just use the grid to go up or down, right? Um, so from here, you want to really line it up, hold it in place, and make sure that there's not a bunch of quilt hanging on the floor that's going to be tough, right? So you want this to all be up and loose as possible um, to get this to go across. I will often stop halfway just to double check where I am and that it's still gonna land at the end of this line where I want it. Ugh. That was tough. I should have had my magical gloves on. That would have made it a little easier. But anyways, the first line is in. So now I'm gonna go up a bit. Right, and check on my ruler how much, um, let's see, I want this to be, how far I want this to be from here. That's one and a half, let's go with two. Two lines on the ruler, line that up, one, two on the other side, it's here, one, two, so I'm good. Where's my other, oh, it's on the floor, okay. Oh, goodness, I'm getting a little tired. Okay. All right. All right. Now, my machine has started skipping stitches and I'm not sure why it's doing that. It's making me crazy. Anyways, if anybody has any ideas why that's happening now for no reason out of the blue, Please let me know. Um, 
and we've got so just keep doing that right the same distance around so we've got two lines here two lines there and then just bring it back across All right, so I'm just gonna do that and grid it out, and uh, then we'll move on. All right, so I have all the lines done going one direction, and then you just simply put the ruler down, right, at a 90 degree angle to what you've already done, and that'll give you a perfect angle to then start heading up the other direction. Just that easy. And then come back down around, Right, I know I'm two lines over on the, oh, that's only one line. Keep on going. All right, so then that is two lines. All right. Get it back down the other way. So you can see I just keep doing that. Blah, 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 and keep going around. Whew, I need a coffee. I'm getting tired. All right. Not good for me when I start to get tired. As I've talked about before, I have this really weird movement disorder that makes me shake. And that's when problems start. Okay. So you can see I have um, a couple done here. Can you see it? I hope you can. All right? So I'm just gonna keep going and making that happen, make those lines. Uh, you know, 90 degree to the ones that I first did. Just really quickly, I'm sure you see these white kind of gross stitches on the edge. That's wash away thread. It's just currently holding the applique down while I do this so that, um, you know, I didn't want to have it be loose or just be relying on glue. So I actually sewed it down with these wash away stitches um, and I wanted the quilting to hold it in place uh, once that was done. But uh, this is just a temporary fix. And then one more item I should have put on my pet peeves video. <laughs> look, I even look tired. Ooh. Hello. <laughs> um, these rulers. Oh my gosh. Is there any way that we could create one that's not so damn shiny so that you can actually just see through it even in a bright light? Like say this bright light that's coming from here, which is making this impossible to actually see through because it's just glare. I don't know, the people who make these things, it's just like, it, it, I'm like, if you never used your products, it's really difficult. Anyways, this is not that video. <laughs> so we shall carry on. And look, it's done, perfectly gridded out, and I didn't have to mark a thing. I just used the gauge on the ruler to figure it out, and now I'm, and then run the perimeter, right? do all the center and then run the perimeter and now I'm done with this and ready to move on to the um, next piece. I wanted to show you this close up just to show you kind of a gauge between what's too much quilting and what's not enough because that's also really important when you're planning out your work, okay? So you see this, the area of the orange and the oatmeal, right? That's about as unquilted as you want to get. The general rule is if it's any bigger than your fist, that's too much the open space that's not quilted, okay? So you can see that this area is really just kind of on that line of not having enough quilting. Um, so I'm kind of contemplating maybe doing another line through it, but I really dig in the kind of 60s, you know, 70s vibe of this, you know, bohemian uh, experience that we got going on here with these large looping circles. Um, but then, down here on this part, um, the quilting is much tighter. It's almost uh, an, a one inch grid. That's probably about as small as you wanna make it unless you're doing a stipple, right? Where you're just doing a random and you're really trying to like tack it down or you know do something really tight on purpose for a reason. But just in terms of general quilting for beginners, kind of keep that as a rule. The smallest you're gonna go is about a one inch grid, which is about what this is. Right? And then the, the, the most open that you're gonna to wanna to make it is what this background is. Again, uh, never leaving an area on the quilt bigger than your fist um, unquilted. Otherwise it just gets really baggy and it's, it's not cute. So we don't want that. 
Okay, so I am done with that. Um, I'm now gonna move on to the stop border and I'm gonna do it to echo the purple here because the stop border itself is purple, right? And so that those lines, those, those tight lines, I'm gonna do the same thing on this purple so that it kind of goes together. And then on the bigger border, um, I'm gonna let it kind of just naturally evolve. I tend to do, and this is just a personal thing, is so the quilting in the body is circular, so then I'll tend to do the quilting on the main borders, um, angular or linear, so that there's a balance of the two in any work. Now, sometimes I'll make it echo, but I generally tend to go with whatever's in the body, I'll do the opposite in the borders. section here I've done the stop border what I normally will do is I'll go through here and kind of grid it out um, just with some chalk so that I know that this right here is going to line up with this down here so essentially uh, and I won't generally try and draw in the actual um, body on the fabric just because I have not had great experience with marking tools um, Somehow they always seem to leave some kind of residue. So I will go through and just give myself a little tick down here, right down here at this point, um, so that I know that these are lining up and then I'll just grid it out. But let me draw your attention to one thing really quickly, is that on this end here, um, obviously you need to take into account for the stop border. So this is not this square here needs to be kind of um, absorbed. Um, so I'll not line this one up, right? Cause I'm gonna just move it over, ooh, just a little more than a quarter of an inch so that it's here. And again, I'm trying to factor in some of this and then a little less here, and then I'll be back on track, let's say for this one. Okay, so that's how I kind of do it. And then I'll just probably zigzag this and then do some lines through it, something easy, because this stop order was extremely time consuming. And at this point, <laughs> uh, I'd really like to be done. <laughs> so for the last border, I am going to just kind of start doing um, some lines, right? And it's gonna kind of develop, at least this is the way I do it. <laughs> Other people probably want to plan it out a little more, but I kind of like it just, um, you know, growing organically in terms of the design. So I'm going to start here and then I'm just going to take this ruler, right, and line it up with this point, right, the, the first corner um, on the quilt. Maybe just a little bit shy of that just to accommodate for, again, like I said, this uh, stop border. Okay, so there's that. This quilt is giving me trouble here, hanging down on the floor. Get up off the floor. Okay, and now I'm ready to really get going. There. nice straight lines just kind of gridding it out um, all right all right so I've come back to the beginning so now I'm just doing that same thing but in the reverse direction which will help uh, kind of square it up <laughs> So I've gone through and I've done it each direction. So now I'm just gonna keep building on that with the grid and I'm probably gonna just, you know, keep making marks that kind of echo these first crosses um, all the way through. So that's, that's normally what I do. Again, it just makes it really easy with this tool. All right, check it out. The side borders are done, both the stop border and the larger border. I'm really happy with the way that it turned out. So now all I have to do is just trim this up to the, you know, 
well, and square it up, <laughs> um, to the actual edge of the fabric, cut it off this white, right, the, the batting and the back, and then just bind it, and that's it. So anyways, I hope that that is helpful in terms of just getting started with a mid-arm, in case you got home with one and you're like, what do I do now? How do I actually use this? <laughs> because that may have been my experience. <laughs> and so I wanted to share with you just a little bit of kind of my process of how I've gone through figuring out um, how to use that, how to use it more successfully, um, how to use the templates and the rulers to get straight lines and things like that. Um, so anyways, as always, I appreciate you tuning in. If you're watching this on YouTube, please hit the subscribe button. I really, really appreciate your support. Thanks so much.